You want to see something truly amazing. Now, when this begins to sink in, it's going to appear astounding. Beside the fact of having three controls here, one group of mice consuming, consuming feed with green tea catagens added to it. Look at the survival rate of that group. One group with cocoa flavanols. Look at the survival rate of that group. And of course, the control without any green tea catagens or cocoa flavanols. You can see the comparison right there. The life extension properties of the green tea catagens and the cocoa flavanols already is astounding. Now, you know where it gets really amazing? They did not start feeding the control, I should say the other groups, the green tea catechin group or the cocoa flavanol group. They did not start feeding those particular components until starting at 92 weeks. So it wasn't like they were brought up on it. It was basically something interjected towards the end of life expectancy. And look at the results. They are incredible. Now keep in mind, what the backstory here is, the researchers want to look at plant flavanols that kind of had a similar effect to caloric restriction. And so basically that's when they want to look at green tea catechins and cocoa flavanols. Now, a lot of people are gonna go, well, what happens if you combine the two? That's future research. But stick within the parameters of the outcome of this particular research, either one of the two, just absolutely amazing. So let us get into the research as follows. Aging US, dietary supplementation with green tea catechins and cocoa flavanols. Caloric restriction based, now we're gonna scroll down to the public release of the research. We're gonna go and read a large excerpt from the full study, primarily because when I read the first part of the public release, it kind of like left some things out. But the conclusion of the full study is pretty comprehensive. So let us proceed. Caloric restriction based on diet low in calories has been shown to attenuate aging sarcopenia in various species by acting at different levels of the skeletal muscle. Now keep in mind, MN stands for motor neurons, NMJ, neuromuscular junctions. Caloric restriction has been reported to ameliorate age-related changes in rodents, neuromuscular junctions, and to prevent motor neuron and motor axon degeneration found to occur with aging. In a similar way, some dietary supplements have been shown to counteract age-related changes that contribute to neuromuscular defunction. Plant flavonoids have gained particular attention as dietary compounds for keeping good health, preventing a number of diseases, particularly cardiac disorders and cancer. Now, stay with me. As we get to the end of the conclusion here, I know it's a long read, but after that, we'll go into the dosaging that was added to the animal feed so you get an idea as far as approximations. Remember, animal studies and human studies can vary dramatically because of different biologies, obviously, but at least it will give you an idea of the ballpark. But to proceed as follows. In summary, dietary intake of flavonoids from green tea or cocoa was able to significantly increase the survival rate of aged mice and prevent some aggressive structural changes occurring with senescence in distinct cellular components of the neuromuscular system. Both diets clearly preserved NMJ, neuromuscular junctions, and Innervation and maturity delayed the senescence process of the skeletal muscle and enhanced its regenerative capacity as inferred from the more youthful cellular phenotype of, of myofibers. The apparent reduction of myofiber degeneration and regeneration cycles. The preservation of myogenic SC population and the increased expression, I'll read this kind of fast, PGC1A alpha additional GTE and cocoa flavonoids differentially promoted stability. I, now, I'll take that back and read a little slower. They both operated a little differently. Cocoa flavonoids did one thing, and as you go to the full study, it'll uh, elucidate the differences between the two. It's a little bit too detailed to bring up in one quick video, but they both took different paths, but yielded the same outcome in reference to uh, extension of life of the groups to proceed. Additionally, green tea extract and cocoa flavonoids differentially promoted the stability of excitatory synaptic inputs to motor neurons, alleviate microgliosis, and modulate the balance between pro-inflammatory and neuroprotective microglial phenotypes. The differential effects of flavonoids from green tea extract and cocoa on changes occurring in the spinal cord with age suggest 
that there might be a benefit to combine, next study, combine different flavonoids to counteract the negative effects of aging in the neuromuscular system. Furthermore, the association of flavonoid supplementation with regular physical exercise must be taken into consideration in the therapy of sarcopenia. Future research is needed to investigate whether higher doses of flavonoids are needed and or longer term interventions that can help restore proper motor function. In any case, and to conclude, for the treatment of aging related neuromuscular alterations that occur with sarcopenia, our data, quoting obviously, should be considered in the context of dietary management of patients affected by muscular and motor neuron diseases. Pretty amazing outcome for some pretty well available and marketed items. Cocoa flavonoids, flavonols, flavonoids, and green tea catagens. Now, to the dosage, remember this is, an ad, this is added to animal feed. This is the approximation. And the biologies are quite different, so we don't know if this is going to, um, how would you say, equate to human dosages. Uh, anywhere near that ballpark until human studies are done. But still, just the same, people want to know, and here's the information. Excerpt. The green tea extract group was designed to receive an average dose of approximately 200 milligrams of EGCG, or EGCG, a kilogram of body weight a day. The cocoa group was designed to receive an average dose of approximately 13.33 milligrams of flavonoids a kilogram of body weight a day. The diets started at 92 weeks, which is just amazing. Because you think about it, if an individual, for example, decided to start getting in shape that this is adding publisher bias and it's hyperbole but still just the same to imagine if an individual was able to take something later on in life let's say in their 40s or 50s or 60s wherever it is started incorporating green tea extract or coca flavanols to yield a similar benefit in reference to the outcome in this animal model and potentially help with healthy aging as well is a phenomenal, phenomenal gain in basically the general populace health overall, provided they get like you or I to have privy to these type of studies. Still, just the same, amazing, simple, eloquent, and easy to interject into an individual's daily regime or diet per se, or regimen. So bottom line is, it looks really cool. Next question, what happens when you combine the two? Taste-wise, it may be a little challenging, but still just the same. You can see the potential there, especially as you get into the full study, you'll recognize they both operate a little differently. The full study goes into a, uh, more of a technical aspect of that, but that's the beautiful part about it, is one does one thing, one does the other thing, yet yields the same outcome. Combine the two, is it synergistic? That'll be for future studies overall. Gratitude to the researchers, Humble for you watching. As always, thank you. And I look forward to see you all once again next week. Catch you next time. Bye.